YouTube, what's going on? So it's been a while. I have a feeling this is going to be a longer video. Uh, so bear with me. It's going to be diecast. I won't get into the whole BS of the last couple months because uh, it just gets too many panties in a bunch when you speak truth on it. And uh, too many people are just too clueless. So I'm not going to get into that. We'll just look at diecast. Some really cool stuff though. Just some stuff I've accumulated. And a bunch of stuff that I've gotten that won't be shown in this video. But in future videos. So we have this. Nissan Skyline which is comparable to the Infinity uh, is it the G G30 or something I forget which one it is really sweet car though definitely the right color for that car okay here we have a Ferrari. By the way, these are Kyosho that we're starting out with. We've got a Ken Mary. We have an RS2000. The diorama I will touch on also. The new diorama that I've been working on. Um, it's been a lot of fun. And I think probably maybe one of the better dioramas that I've done. I still have a lot to do with the yard. This house actually sits back. But I've got like the yard to do there. Uh, I made a chain link fence for this dirt lot. Um, just as an example. Here's a piece of the chain link fence. So that's what it looks like. And I did make this from scratch. I bought an HO scale chain link fence and it's not tall enough. It would be like a, a half side, half height for like a yard. But for what I wanted, it needed to be taller. So the only option there is to make it. So the reason that I haven't installed it yet is because I need to do the static grass first. I could do the fence and then the grass, but <clears throat> the problem with that is that the grass will stick to the fence and it'll be really difficult to clean it up. And uh, these fences are pretty easy to make somewhat time consuming but not hard the only downside is that uh, really just one side is worth showing and that would be this side I'll show you the back although the the Woodland Scenics HO scale chain link fence that I purchased doesn't look a whole lot different on the back of it You could still probably use use it that way. You just want the side that's going to be most visible to be the this side. So here is all of the fence. Just waiting to do the static grass, and then I'll put that fence in. And then uh, this thing will really start coming together. Because uh, then I can move on to this and finish it up. I made the telephone poles. Those are scratch made. And I made the cell phone tower. That's also scratch made. This building was a kit. So I put it together 
that did the uh, the mortar because there was no mortar it was just all a dark red color <clears throat> so I painted it and then I did um, drywall spackle and then I weathered it after that this building I purchased as you see it here and then the house so pretty good size layout and uh, honestly when I got it plastered and sanded I wasn't really liking it but after painting the sidewalk and the road it really started to look like something so I figured I would continue on with it anyways back to the die cast so over here we have a Kyosho R33 this is the driveway to the house you can see here I have a lot to do on this side a lot to do but for the most part I know what I'm gonna do and I think it'll look really good this is one of the nicer Kyo shows that I think they've done from a detail standpoint it is a limited release too they only did 999 of these but look at the headlight detail it's very very nicely done so I'm happy to have that come back over here and we'll get back to it because we got quite a few more cars so before I get to the TLV stuff, I did get one green light, a really nice Civilian Deco Lincoln Continental, probably this right here might be the best example of any 1 to 64 scale Lincoln Continental. With the possible exception of the, I forget the brand, but they are plastic and they are really highly detailed. But even this has lensed headlights and taillights, nice prototypical wheels. It's a really nicely done car. So I grabbed that. Um, I picked up this. I don't really know why. Because I have a couple of the green light. And the green light is so much better. So I'll probably resell this. Cool truck though. All right, NO64 Toyota AE86 Chameleon. It's not a rolling car. Uh, NO64s usually don't roll. But and it sure does look good. That's pretty cool. This behemoth. This one was tough because he had white and he had the black one the black one definitely looks better 
but because of the scale, I went with the light. And this is a Rolls Royce Phantom. I forget the brand that does it. I have another one, the Phantom Coupe in black. And that one rolls. This one doesn't really roll. It's really heavy. It looks really good. You've got the Spirit of Ecstasy there on the grill. And I almost feel like this might be a different brand than the other one. Lens headlights and tail lights, really nice prototypical wheels. It's a really cool car. Okay, now, so that's it for the non-TLV. Now we're gonna get to the TLV stuff in no particular order. I guess I'll start with this Nissan Gloria. I love stuff like this. 1980s civilian deco. Even though it was never available in the US, it's still just a really cool car. And this car, I, I think, has really nice body lines to it. And then it has that wraparound rear window which I bet cost a fortune to replace. And with most TLV lensed headlights and taillights. All right, next is a car that might look similar to that. I have this casting in white but the white one is real common. It's all over the place. But the blue one just seems a little bit harder to find. You can still find it though. This is the Toyota Crown Royal Saloon. And if those wheels were black washed, this thing would be so ridiculous very very nice car how I don't know as a detailed replica collector I don't know how anybody could pass on Tomica Limited Vintage. Best cars in the scale. Okay. Here's an oldie. Oldie but goodie. I don't even know what the model is. There we go. It's a Toyo Pet Master Line. And it is a total gem. Two door wagon. I don't know the year because Tomica Limited Vintage, the box is all Japanese. Some of the newer ones that came out in the last three years or so published the year on the front of the box in English but the early stuff they didn't do that but this thing looks killer and as a diehard Toyota enthusiast 
I'm very happy to have this. Now we're going to get into, well, probably the stuff that you guys would like a little bit better. Starting with this. Ooh. This is a Nissan Gloria Gran Turismo Ultima. I believe it's also known as the Nissan Gloria Type X. And I have this tooling in a reddish mauve type of a color. But with the spoiler and these wheels, it looks it's a it's a huge step up. It looks actually it's actually in my opinion one of the best looking TLD cars. Incredible lens headlight detail. Those headlights. Yeah, I, I really dig this actually. I might not need the other one anymore. Now that is sweet. Man, that looks good. Sometimes you don't realize how good these castings look until you get a camera on them up close, which is part of why I like doing these dioramas. Okay, the last two, or three, I know you guys will like, these were all commercially available in the U.S. and much more well-known for the United States market. We have a Honda Integra, although here in the U.S. this would be an Acura. Another fantastic looking car. Great color for this car. Two. This one has become very hard to find. Climbing in price, it continuously gets more expensive to buy. This one's not in the cleanest of condition. You can tell it's been handled a little bit. It might clean up. I haven't tried cleaning it up yet. But this is a Nissan Fair Lady. 2 plus 2. It's a 280. 280Z. So the 260Z is the one that they've put out quite a bit and just recently actually did the 260. But they haven't done the 280 in quite a while. And if you look, some people are asking between two and three hundred dollars for the white version of this car they're not getting that I don't think but a realistic selling price uh, I don't know I think you could expect to get maybe 60 for this car I did pay a little bit less than that um, and it's a car that'll never leave my c 
collection. I had the white one a while back and I traded it for the silver 260. At the time, the silver 260 was worth quite a bit more, but they have since flip-flopped. So now I'll just keep one of each and then I don't need to worry about that. I don't really do it for the value, but I like to try to get them before they get too expensive. That is one of the best looking 1 to 64 scale Zs. Especially of the 280. All right, then the last car, you guys have seen this casting, even on this channel, although it was a different color. I have to preface this by saying, Ferrari only ever produced this car in red. However, the guys on Gas Monkey on Fast and Loud had the opportunity to buy one of these that was totaled and when they restored it they restored it black in my opinion in my opinion this car was meant to be black black is is just so much more suiting for this car than red and this is the F40 the red one is nice, but th this car was meant to be black, in my opinion. Probably the only Ferrari that I would say that about. This is one of my all-time favorite Ferraris. And uh, this car is widely recognized as the first supercar, as it was the first 200 mile an hour production car. And this was a transitional car. Um, this is a pivotal car in automotive history, especially exotics. It's kind of a... Uh, when I say transitional, this car was the phasing out of the analog supercar and the phasing in of the digital, more advanced supercar. Look at those details. Look at those body lines, the stance, the wheels pop. I just think everything about this looks so much better in black. And I know I showed this on the red one. Opening bonnet. Thing you got to be careful of on the black one is fingerprints, so I'm not going to touch it up too much. But also the uh, front hood opens. So, very welcome addition into the collection, the black F40. Now, let's take a closer look at a couple of these Kyosho. I kind of blew past them. There's that skyline. I believe this is an R30. I could be wrong about that. I don't know the exact model. It is a first edition beads collection. Pretty sick. And then 
one of my probably my all-time favorite skyline is the C110 Ken Mary GTR although the Ken Mary GTR is a very rare car very expensive the Ken Mary's not but the GTR is they didn't make that many of them but you could get a regular Ken Mary and make it a clone I love this car I am on the fence I may paint the wheels I'm not sure it's really going to depend on how easy they come off if they come off as easily as the FJ wheels then I will probably paint them because I I just don't like the black wheels on 1 to 64 scale cars it just drowns out the detail if I if I were to paint these wheels silver this whole car would pop look at the headlights beautiful craftsmanship here whoever designed it very legible GTR badge and the grill really nice looking tire tread much nicer than what you see with American die cast including Auto World who is the the benchmark for American die cast <clears throat> very very nice looking ass love it I love the body lines on this car the fastback look and I think this car this is a personal theory I don't think anybody would ever admit to it but I personally think that this car was influenced a great deal by the Mustang of that era the Mustang in the late 60s was all the hype they were selling tons of them and at that time Nissan didn't have a car that was really built for the American superhighway in fact I think the first Nissan that was really kind of capable was the 240Z and then Honda and Toyota started making cars with the intent to make them for the United States market so um, we'll take a closer look at this and then we'll kind of overcap it or recap it really cool Kyosho Ferrari it's also in black looks great doesn't the camera just doesn't do these cars much justice See if I can set these up a little bit. So it was a pretty good haul. with it uh, what do we get one two three only three new Toyotas for the collection but but that's okay
Man, this red Integra really looks sharp. All right, so just to kind of recap, we have the Skyline. The Integra. The Toyota 86. Awesome, Gloria. This might be my favorite car of this bunch. I don't know. It's definitely up there. There's some nice ones here, though. This R33, brilliant car. The Rolls Royce. I don't get too excited about these. The reason that I wanted it is because it's the only, it's literally the only 1 to 64 scale Rolls Royce of premium detail quality. <clears throat> and then the F40. And then over here, got the Ferrari, Ken Mary, another Gloria. How's that for the, an evolution going from that to that? In just a span of about 12 years or so, 280Z. Toyota Crown, another one of my favorites, another Skyline, and the Toyota Pet. So I guess the theme of this was Silver Skyline, being that there's four different silver, four different generations. We've got the uh, 1980, 82, somewhere in there. The Ken Mary's going to be 71 to 73. Uh, this would be, I don't know what year this would be, early 2000s. And the R33, I want to say, is 1995. So, oh, one other thing on a side note, I forgot to mention this. Um, the Toy Pimp has decided that he just doesn't have time for the channel so I'm gonna retain uh, ownership and control of the channel I have a lot going on so I'm not going to be able to be too active uh, but I'm hoping by the end of June early July I can start posting more content but as I've said <clears throat> in previous videos when I was when the Toy Pimp was going to take this channel, I was going to start a new channel and put more emphasis on these dioramas. But since I'm going to keep this channel, I'll continue to make diecast videos, but I still will put more of an emphasis on these dioramas because I think uh, they're just great for the hobby. Like, I wouldn't want to collect the cars without making these displays for them and I wouldn't want to make the displays for the cars without collecting the cars so definitely both or nothing for me and uh, I think as far as making these dioramas go I feel like I'm pretty honed in on what I like to do. I think my skill set has evolved to the point where I can make a decent looking urban scene like what we see here with paved roads and sidewalks and I can do a fairly decent mountain scene or landscape scene with paved roads or dirt roads. So I like to try to mix it up, but I really like incorporating buildings into the layouts because they just give it that next level of realism. So once I get the chain link fence up and the power lines up or the phone lines, 
and get this done over here and get all the static grass and the bushes and everything added and I'll take this outside I have no doubt it will be the most convincing layout that I've done and it's always fun making these to get to that point where you can take it outside and photograph your cars because that's what it's all about but yeah the reason that I'm not the reason that I'm gonna wait to put the fence up to do the static grass first because for example along this slab of concrete I want some taller like dead grass maybe a little bit of green grass coming out but once I put the fence in I won't be able to do that so like this fence will go right here so I want I just want there to be grass coming up along the edge there but I don't know I really like the way the sidewalk and the all the concrete in this diorama has come out pretty good all right everyone it's good to be back and uh, I don't know when I'll do the next video but I'll try to get I'll try to get something up every week but I can't promise that but I'll definitely try to be more active than I've been so you guys take care and I will holler at the next video